But again, to find those nice organic uh, kind of swooping shapes through here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, our H polish brush and our trim dynamic brush is probably going to be our biggest things, and maybe even our pinch brush. So B H P is our H polish, B T D is our trim dynamic, and B P I is our pinch brush. Of course, I have hotkeys assigned to all those, so I can very quickly go uh, trim dynamic is Alt T, H polish is Alt H, and pinch is Alt Y. And also going in here, hold down a control shift and go in here to clip. So clip curve, I can go through here and very quickly, like right along this ridge here, this doesn't look very uh, terminator to me. It looks not very hard surface organic. Oh, so we need to alt tap and make sure that's uh, selected. And then again, turn off, if you have uh, poly paint on, you're gonna see everything uh, looks like it's activated. And that's because uh, everything is filled with a white vertex color. If I hold down shift and turn that off. You're gonna see now when I click through here, my dimmed subtools are going to be the active subtools. So now I can go back through here and we'll use clip. And we're just going to tap alt once to get a nice clean smooth curve. And if you alt, if you alt tap twice, that'll give you a harsher curve if you want to do something like this. Uh, but in this case, we'll go ahead and just keep these smooth for now. And we'll go in here with our H polish brush. And you're going to see I'm making my H polish brush bigger than you would think. And then also I'm going to go through here and make sure, let's go ahead and open up the side here have the brush menu docked over here. You can just grab this little white dot and drag it over here. Under auto masking, you can have uh, back face masking turned on. You're going to see I put this in my interface so I can have a little bit faster access to it. Uh, so when I hold down alt, I can go through here and I can thicken this up and then control drag to redynamesh. And then I can go through here and I can polish this down. So very quickly, I can go through here and I can polish this down and then hold down alt and polish up. So along the back here, I'm basically going to go through very quickly and use H polish and trim dynamic. And again, letting go of alt and holding down alt, making my brush size a little bigger than you think you might need it. If you make it too small, you're going to end up with, uh, like if I go through here and try to polish this area down, it's going to get very warbly and kind of dented looking, which if you're looking for like a hammered steel or something might kind of work. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to over crank it a little bit and then hold down alt and let go of alt and just alternate between those two no pun intended, and that'll go ahead and give us uh, that nice smooth look. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, you can always go back in and correct this with like your move brush and move that around, or like we did before our clip brush. We can go back through with our clip brush and kind of smooth those out. Now remember you can always control drag and re -dynamesh. If you find that your dynamesh it's just a little too low res for you while you're figuring these shapes out. Just feel free to go and crank up your resolution. And of course, for you guys, it's not going to be in your custom menu. It's going to be under geometry, uh, dynamesh resolution there. Uh, so again, H polish trim dynamic. And if you remember from the previous uh, videos here, let's go ahead and simplify. We can you can choose to simplify these shapes. Like if you want to go through and be like, you know what, um, I want to keep that ridge down the middle. So I'm going to H polish and keep that edge. Or you can go, you know what, let's go through here and get rid of this edge. But the difference between that H polish and trim dynamic that we talked about uh, a little bit earlier, you can hold down alt, you can kind of pull out to this form, you can uh, let go of alt and then hold down alt again. We're just alternating between those two with H polish. However, if you're ever at a point where you want to be like, you know what, um, I want to put a bevel along this midline and you try to do it with your H polish, it's not going to let you. Uh, well, it kind of did a little bit, uh, but that's because over here under your brush samples, it's going to have Preserve Edge is turned on. However, when we go to Trim Dynamic, Preserve Edge is set to 1. So you're going to notice that Trim Dynamic will absolutely destroy an edge. And this is really cool uh, for going in here and really uh, putting in a nice bevel along an edge, like say right here. You can put a bevel uh, along these corners right here very easily. Uh, and then once you've done that, let's see if we can find a better uh, place for this. I guess this is fine. So we'll go through here and we'll say H Polish this out for instance, and we'll go ahead and keep that line down the middle for now. And again, if we want to get rid of that, uh, it's easy enough. Let's go ahead and control Dynamesh as we go to kind of redistribute our geometry a little bit. And we're just going through and finding those forms uh, that we might want to keep. Um, however, when we get to this area over here, we might think, you know what, right along here I want to put a bevel. So this is where you'll go into your Trim Dynamic and you'll just pop uh, a bevel right down the middle of there. And then if this is a little bit warbly for you, you can also turn on Lazy Mouse with your Trim Dynamic. And that'll put a little rubber band behind here. You can go into your Stroke Lazy Mouse, crank that Lazy Radius up. And that'll put even in a longer line. So if you really want very controlled sweeping lines uh, behind you can. And now that you have a flat surface here, go back in with your H Polish brush and just continue to refine that surface. Now, H Polish isn't the only polish brushes you have. You can hit the comma key, go into the Brush tab, 
If you go over here into the polish menu, you got a bunch to choose from. You got M polish, polish hard, polish soft. You also have finishing brushes. So if you go in here and you're clay, you're going to have clay finish brushes and clay polish brushes that you can try. Uh, there's some other cool brushes in here like trim brushes. We're using trim dynamic, but there's also like trim smooth border, trim hole. Trim hole's a neat one. So we go in here to trim hole and uh, it's camera based. If you just kind of push in, it'll push a hole straight back. Uh, if you hold down alt, it'll pull a hole straight up, straight towards the camera. Uh, you can kind of do the same thing with a clay brush if you wanted to go through here and kind of just kind of do a couple different layers of clay brush, control drag to DynaMesh and then push this in. Uh, we're going to get into IMM brushes and stuff like that and Boolean meshes and of course insert mesh brushes as well. Um, you can very quickly go into like BI brush insert primitives, hit M uh, or go up here and grab like a cylinder and then you can just pop a cylinder in here. And if you pull out and then you push back in, it'll thin it out for you automatically as opposed to pulling out and then going through here and trying to like thin this out or scale it up. Let's go ahead and turn on L sim. So to keep it along here. Um, also you can hold, you can start scaling in this direction and hold down alt and it'll scale along that uh, those two axes there, so you can kind of use that to your advantage. And once you got that, control drag, control drag again, and uh, you can use this method as well. Or like we mentioned before, when we went over Boolean, when we cut out these holes here, you can hold down Alt when you drag these out, and then it'll cut through. But for now, I'm just going to go through and kind of play with these forms with my age polish brush. And we, like I mentioned before, you can also go through here with your pinch brush. So if you wanted to go through here and be like, you know what? I want to put a ridge right along here. You can use your Damien standard or your standard brush to kind of pull out a ridge here. And then you can go back into your clay brush. And you can build up to those forms again and then refine those two surfaces with um, your age polish brush here and kind of get those uh, working nicely again. If you want to pull out to a corner, this is where uh, the move brush with your AccuCurve turned on. So if you go to your move brush, turn this on, you can pull out to corners. If you wanted to pull this out uh, to a corner and then maybe say pull this out to a corner, it's a lot easier to do it with AccuCurve turned on. And we're not getting into box modeling just yet. Uh, when we go to refine these surfaces, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more. Uh, but for now, we're just having fun kind of going through and playing around with you know, what we want uh, this final result to be. But we're just going through some uh, different options there. So I'm going to go and pull this all the way back. Um, you know, I guess I can leave that crest alone. And we'll just start figuring out and dialing in uh, what we want to flatten and what we want to kind of clean up a little bit. And I just want to mention this one more time. Uh, important to have back face masking on. If you have this off and you're on very thin objects and you start doing this, it might want to pull through um, on the back here. Uh, let me see if I can get that to work here. There you go. You get very, very thin meshes here. So you want to make sure you have um, back face masking turned on on these brushes, especially, like I say, when you're building up uh, very thin uh, areas. And you can also go through here and you can start using your Damien standard to delineate between maybe different, not necessarily different panels in this case, but different volumes uh, that you're trying to maybe differentiate. So we can make deeper cuts around here and we may even go as far uh, later on to go ahead and start chopping some of this stuff out, which I th think we probably will. Uh, but for instance, right along the head here, instead of having that nice clean uh, sweep through here, we can actually maybe put a line through here. And this may not be the direction I want to head in, but we can always go through here and we can uh, kind of test this out a little bit and see if uh, we want more of a line between the cranium volume and the other one here. And always remember you can re-dynamesh it by control dragging out in your document to redistribute that geometry. And if you don't like that, just go back in with your clay brush and you can go ahead and soften that line between these two and then hold down shift to smooth and then you're back to that. Uh, alternatively, you could do like we did before and you can go to the point before um, we made that line here. You can hold down um, control and tap that and then go in here with your uh, BHR history recall brush, turn off X symmetry and then you can use your history recall brush to go ahead and just morph back to that point in history you were before. Uh, if you want that to be carried over to the other side, again, just mirror and weld across the X, turn X symmetry back on, and you're back where you started. Um, but you know, I didn't mind it. So we can go ahead and we'll see if that works for us. And again, you can also use your clay brush to go ahead and move some of these things around. And also don't be afraid to go through here with your move brush and kind of pull some of those points around.